Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Thank you for all the likes, all the subscriptions, and mostly for all the comments. We take your comments very seriously and we're always looking for through lines to help us develop new studies. So what we're going to do today is start a study looking at mycorrhizal fungi and its effects on rooting of both beans and turf grass. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is mycorrhizal fungi? So maybe that's where we should start before we dive into the study. So mycorrhizal fungi are a group of organisms that form a symbiotic relationship with plant roots. Now when we talk about a symbiotic relationship, that really means mutually beneficial. Both the fungi and the plants get something out of this relationship without either suffering. So what are the plants getting from this relationship? Well, when we have a good inoculation, the mycorrhizal fungi act as an extension of that root zone and they're very small, fine hyphal threads or fungal threads that can get to areas in the soil that your standard root can't. So ultimately, those mycorrhizal fungi enhance the absorptive capacity of that plant. Now the plant's taking in more water and more nutrients. Now, a lot of plants can survive but not thrive without this relationship. So in some instances, mycorrhizal fungi can enhance the uptake of water and nutrients tenfold. That's great for the plant, but what's the fungi getting out of this relationship? Well, these fungi aren't photosynthetic like our plants are. And so the fungi are just getting sugars. They're getting carbs. They're getting photosynthates from that plant. So functionally, the plant is feeding those fungi carbohydrates. And in return, the fungi are giving that plant more water and more nutrients for better growth and development. So how did we set up this study? Well, we thought we'd better start with a pretty low fertility root zone mixture. So we chose a sand-based root zone mixture. Now we did mix in 5% peat by volume. So in this pint of soil, about 5% is peat. Now why did we choose that low fertility soil? It's so that we can truly see the effect on plant growth of our mycorrhizal inoculant and of mycorrhizal inoculant with a balanced or complete fertilizer. So what are we gonna plant? We're gonna plant three beans in each of uh, these containers, and we're gonna plant an 80%, 20% perennial ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass seed mixture at the high label rate of eight pounds per thousand in each of these three containers. Great, we've got the seed in the ground, what's next? These two will receive no additional fertilizer, no additional mycorrhiza. Those are gonna be our untreated controls. As we step over this direction, this row will just receive mycorrhiza at the high label rate um, plus the seed, but no additional fertilizer. And our last treatment, our third treatment, is going to get that mycorrhizal inoculant, the seed, and the fertilizer. Well, which fertilizer do we choose? We chose a fertilizer that we're fairly familiar with here in the lab already. It's a complete or balanced fertilizer, so it has nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Uh, if you looked at the label, that would be a 7-1 two and it happens to be soybean meal. There's a couple of different ways to add mycorrhizal inoculant and when you get that product in the mail or when you buy it down at the local nursery there's going to be instructions on the label. So you can either mix it in with water and then water your transplant with that or at seeding if you're in a container you can mix the mycorrhizal inoculant in with your root zone mixture and that's what we're going to be doing today. Just to be efficient we've got everything pre-weighed already and ready to go. So I'm going to take our root zone mixture, I'm going to add it uh, to this bulk mixture and I'm going to add the high label rate of mycorrhizal inoculant as well and then we're going to go ahead and mix that up. As we're mixing this in, I kind of just like to sprinkle a little bit in as we go just to aid in that mixing when it's time. We're going to put that 712 soybean meal out at a pound, a half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Once we have this rep fertilized, we'll be adding our beans to the front about an inch deep and an inch spacing. I better not plant them upside down, man. <laughs> Then we'll slightly incorporate that 80-20 perennial ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass mixture, get everything watered in and watch it grow. Now we're seeded, inoculated, and fertilized. The last thing we need to do is to get our intern over here to get these watered in.
So here we are at the end of our mycorrhiza study. We're about seven weeks in and we would have expected to start to see that mycorrhiza really take effect and go to work for our plants at about the end of the first month. Let's go ahead and start off talking about beans. And remember, we planted multiple plants but thinned it down to one for the purpose of the study. Overall, our most spindly plant was our untreated control. And that made sense because it didn't receive any fertilizer and it didn't have any help from that mycorrhiza either. When we look at the mycorrhiza only and the mycorrhiza plus fertilizer, we did notice some differences there as well. They both performed similarly in plant color, although the plant color and the treatment that received the fertilizer persisted longer, was a darker green plant, and it tended to just be a more robust, stout, resilient appearing plant. So what are we learning here? That certainly the fertilizer had an effect and it seems that the mycorrhiza did to some extent as well. So that's what we saw above ground on the beans. But the mycorrhizae are active under the ground. Remember, they're infecting that root and having that symbiotic relationship. So what did we see below ground? Well, when we looked in our root zones here, we honestly couldn't see a lot of difference and we couldn't see evidence of those thick mycelial mats that we had hoped to see. And that's because of a lot of factors likely or potentially because of a lot of factors. One being the distance of that seed to the edge of the container and the other being that root distribution heading in each direction. One thing that I will note, however, is that in the untreated control, we don't see any evidence of that mycorrhizal inoculant makes sense we didn't add it but we do see this rusty red color that's evidence of that mycorrhizal inoculant being really well distributed throughout that entire root zone we again would have expected that inoculant to really start working in that infection that positive infection to be in place after about week four or five but it gave us confidence in the distribution of our product which was five percent biological and 95 percent inert ingredients throughout uh, the root zone of each of our treatments. Let's talk about the turf grass now and what we observed there. Ultimately, we didn't observe a lot of difference in the above ground growth between the untreated control and the mycorrhiza only. We did start to see a difference when we added fertilizer to the mycorrhiza, and that's kind of telling me that that was more of a fertilizer effect than a mycorrhizal effect, at least with this product. Below ground, similar to the beans, we didn't see a lot of difference, but we did see great evidence that that product was well distributed throughout those root zones. So, at the end of the day, what did we learn? In the beans, it appeared that there was an effect of the mycorrhizal inoculant and that the fertilizer further helped with chlorophyll development, plant growth development, and maturation. With the turf grass, we didn't see as distinct of a mycorrhizal effect, but we certainly did see a fertilizer uh, effect, which would be expected. So let's just remember that we might not have got the results we were hoping for here, but we did do this in a washed sand with just a little bit of peat addition. And that was very intentional to release that biological component. But in a native soil, you might see much different results with the exact same product. The other thing to consider is this was a single product with just two types of uh, mycorrhizal inoculants. There's a myriad of different products with different inoculants, endo, ecto, uh, and so the results might vary based on your soil type, your climate, your location in general. So we didn't see a lot of rooting differences through our root viewing windows here, but let's go ahead, do a root wash, and see if we see any differences in root mass when we get them out of their containers. So let's go ahead and take a moment to summarize what I saw, but more importantly, I want to know what you're seeing here because as we mentioned, this is just a bit inconclusive. We're going to start off with our untreated control in both our beans and our turf grass. Now on both of our untreated controls, we got really good root washes. Uh, there should have been no breakage there. This should be a really clear picture of what was happening below ground. Our next treatment was mycorrhiza alone. And here you'll notice that I broke off a good chunk of the turf grass roots when I was extracting that from the root zone container. So take that for what it's worth, but we do see evidence of our inoculant all the way through that root zone. 
In our last treatment, this was our Mycorrhiza Plus Fertilizer, and you can see that I had a really tough time getting the roots out of that container, and we had pretty significant breakage. So with these fibrous roots in the turf grass, it was just nearly impossible to get them out of our root zone containers. So going to be really inconclusive here um, as the root wash wasn't successful as we'd hoped, but we got good root washes on the beans. So as I take a moment to reflect on this study and similar studies that I've done in the field, I'll be honest, I was a bit surprised. What did I expect to see? I expected to see big cottony masses of fungi on both of these treatments across plant species. And I expected to see less root growth and less rooting mass over here. Now, why could that be? Um, well, we designed this study very intentionally in a sandy soil that would have low micro microbial populations and low microbial activity to start, really giving this mycorrhizal fungi a jump start, or if nothing else, less competition uh, for the plant and for the space and the resource in that soil. So we clearly didn't see that. Now, in the field I mentioned, we've seen differences as well. I might conduct a study with mycorrhizal fungi in McCall, Idaho, another one in Spokane, Washington, and another in Pullman, Washington, and see differences amongst sites with the same inoculant, and that's pretty typical. So these results might vary based on your microbial population in your lawn or garden. Well, I guess to conclude this, we found really inconclusive evidence of how this product worked in our soil at this point in time. Comment below what you saw, what your observations were, and just as importantly, comment below what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for making it to the end of the video and following along, and I'll look forward to seeing you again in the lab.